Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense. And before we get rolling with this video, I just want to real quick cover the four firearms safety rules beforehand. I just feel compelled to do that because this is an uh, intro video. And in an intro video, it's for people who are, of course, new to guns. And so you may or may not know the four firearms safety rules. This deserves its own video, which I will do at some point. But for right now, just so we're all on the same page, I want to give the four firearms safety rules. The first firearm safety rule is treat all guns as if they're loaded, or all guns are always loaded. Which means we're never going to do anything with a unloaded gun that we wouldn't do with a loaded gun. So the word should never, never come out of your mouth. It's okay, Dylan. It's not loaded. Uh, you shouldn't say that, okay? That means we're not going to point the gun at ourselves. We're not going to point at someone else. We're just going to treat that gun like it's loaded all the time. If we all just did that, no firearms accidents would ever happen. The next three rules are derivations or an explanation of, I guess, the first firearm safety rule. So the first firearm safety rule, treat all guns as if they're loaded or all guns are always loaded. The second firearm safety rule is... Never point your gun at anything you're not willing to destroy. Which means I'm not going to point the gun at you, I'm not going to point it at myself, I'm not going to point the gun at anything that I am not willing to destroy. Uh, I always picture that there is a laser coming out of the end of that muzzle, and I don't want to laser anything that I'm not willing to destroy. So I want to be very careful where I point this muzzle. That's particularly important on handguns because it's such a short muzzle, and the slightest turn of your wrist can sweep large swaths of area with that pistol. We want to be very careful where we point that. Uh, the third rule is keep your finger straight and off the trigger. This is where your finger goes on all guns. Pistol, rifle, shotgun, doesn't matter. This is where it goes. It does not go here. Right? We don't rest our finger there. We rest our finger here outside of the trigger guard. We want to keep our finger straight and off the trigger until we're ready to fire. The fourth rule is be sure of your target, its foreground and its background, so that if you pull your gun out to save your life, uh, you want to know what's between you and the bad guy and what's beyond the bad guy. So it's important to know where else could your bullet go in the event that it doesn't go where you want it to. So those are the four firearm safety rules. That's very quick. Like I said, that deserves its own video, which we'll do at some point. However, that is your intro. So as you watch these videos about firearms and, and handling firearms, I want you to keep those four rules in mind all the time, and we're never going to break those. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Dylan Schumacher, Citadel Defense, and this is going to be part two of you just bought an AR-15, and now what? So, uh, the first part was going through the mechanics of the actual weapon and how this thing actually functions, and now it's going to be how to hold it, how to shoot it, how to practice with it. Uh, this is basically just an introductory dry fire session. Uh, right now, coronavirus is going on, so we're all trapped at home anyway, and uh, so a lot of you just maybe bought one of these, and it's like, well, what do I do now? You can't necessarily go to the range and shoot it right now, but what you can do is do some dry fire to ensure that you are ready to go to the range and shoot it. And so we're just going to do some simple dry fire exercises. We're going to talk about how to hold this, how to shoot it, some simple dry fire to get you ready so that when you do go to the range, you're going to be miles ahead of where you would have been otherwise. Okay? So first thing we're going to do when we dry fire is, of course, we're going to make sure that that rifle is unloaded because uh, otherwise that can be really bad. So I like to uh, pull the charging handle back, lock it to the rear. If you haven't seen part one and you don't know how to do that, go ahead and watch that first. Uh, it is clear. I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but I can see it. It's clear. <clears throat> so after we know it's clear, we're, because we're going to be pulling the trigger here, we want to make sure that the weapon is unloaded, I suggest you do this in a basement uh, where you can point the rifle in a safe direction. Now, uh, we're going to work from four different positions to bring the weapon up to fire. So first, let's talk about how we're going to hold the weapon, okay? Uh, for most of us, are right-handed, right? That's going to be pretty simple. You're right if you're left-handed, just reverse what I say, okay? You're going to grip the pistol grip. That's pretty simple. Go ahead and size the stock so that when you fold your arm, the stock goes all the way to your bicep, okay? This would be too short for me. That would be too long for me. I kind of got to size it to where it fits my bicep, okay? That's the best way to size that. You can adjust it, assuming you're shooting without plates or armor or anything like that. So, <clears throat> from there, that's what we're going to grip with our right hand, okay? Left hand, I'm going to tell you to grip it where it's comfortable. Uh, some of you longer limbed fellows will be able to grip it more towards the front. Some of us shorter limbed people will grip it more in. Avoid gripping at the magwell if you can. Uh, that just leaves too much weight out here and it gets harder to control. Uh, so, kind of where it's comfortable. For me, I put this little nice grip here thing 
grippy thing here. Uh, not because I'm going to grip that, actually, but that's a marker for me for where my hand goes. So that's that's why I have that there. And that's why most of us run those on a rifle. Nobody grabs this like this. That, that's weird. It doesn't give you enough control of the rifle. We all grab the actual fore end of the gun, but we run these here so that it marks where our hand goes. Okay? Stance. Stance is very important. So I will try to roll in some pictures of this here. But basically what we want to do is we want to stand with our, if I'm right-handed, with my left foot forward. I'd say by about a half a step to a full step forward. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to load, meaning put most of my weight on, that front foot. So I'm going to be leaning slightly forward with most of my weight on my front foot. Uh, we're going to do that to transfer the recoil to the ground. Okay? And that's one of the best ways in order to do that. When you stand, make sure your hips are pointing towards the target, towards what you're actually trying to shoot. Uh, wherever our hips point is naturally, it can be our natural point of aim. You can shoot across your body, you can do that. However, it's not assisting you the best and it's not aligning with your body's natural point of aim. So pay attention to where your hips are pointing because that's where your natural point of aim is going to be. Furthermore, if you do get into this more and you do start wearing plates and armor and kit and all that kind of stuff, you want your plates up front so that if you get shot, you take it in the plates, uh, not through the side or something like that. Okay. <clears throat> So, we got our stance squared away, we got where we're going to grip the gun squared away. The last thing to do is shoulder the rifle. After we get into a good stance, we grip the gun where it's comfortable. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to shoulder the rifle. So when we shoulder the rifle, we're going to bring it up to right here. Now, I want you to have that stock buried, not buried like all the way down in here, and not so high up that it's, it's transferring over. Remember, the recoil of the gun is going to recoil right along this line. Okay. So we want to get that into our shoulder and as high up so we can bring the gun to our head. We don't want to drop our head to the gun, but we don't want to bring it all the way up here, right, where the recoil is coming clean over my shoulder. So we kind of compromise there. I bring it up right here and I have to drop my head just slightly in order to get it into the gun. But ideally, my head would not move that much. My head's going to stay here. I see what I'm doing and I'm just going to bring the rifle up to my head. Okay? So. That's how we're going to hold the gun. Just go ahead and pause this, get used to that, give it a feel. Okay? But really, like I said, you're just going to want to shoulder the rifle in your shoulder and look down your sighting system. Whether that's irons or a red dot or whatever you got going on, doesn't really matter. Okay? Okay, so now that we've established our grip and our stance, we're going to talk about how to flow through some basic dry fire positions. Okay? So there's going to be four basic positions, like I said. The first one we're going to work with is called low carry or, you know, rifle down, whatever you want to call it. Basically, we're just going to make sure our rifle is pointed straight down, okay? So you're just going to hold it here, again, make sure the rifle is pointed straight down. We're going to start from straight down. We're going to bring the rifle up to that mounting position like we talked about earlier. We're going to disengage the safety, and we're going to pull the trigger. Reset by pulling back on the charging handle, and then reset the safety, put the rifle back down. Okay, that's it. We're just going to start down. The rifle's going to come up disengage the safety, pull the trigger. Now, uh, when you're pointing this at your basement wall, uh, I just want you to go ahead and pick a spot on the wall. Uh, you can pick an outlet, you can pick a light switch, whatever. Just pick something to put your dot on, okay? So, do that. Just do it about five times. Start low, come all the way up, get your optic on target, disengage the safety, pull the trigger. Reset, reset your safety, rifle down. So just so you know, there's a thing called mechanical offset, which means inside 25 yards with this weapon system, what you're going to have is your optic or your iron sights sit about two inches above the barrel. Okay, So there's about that much difference in there, right? So that means your bullet is going to strike about two inches below where you're looking at. So if you want to practice, practice on holding your dot about two inches above what you actually are aiming at in this scenario. Okay. So again, do that five times, just from all the way, from low carry all the way down to all the way up into on target, disengage safety, pull the trigger. Okay. So after that, we will do low ready. So low ready is I want you to bring your rifle on target and then take it down just enough so you can see, you can turn your head, and you can look over your shoulder. Okay? That's low ready. 
basically we're, we still have the rifle up and it's ready to go. However, we can still see what's going on. It's not all the way up in our vision and precluding us from seeing below it or anything else we need to be seeing. So that's low ready. So again, we're just going to do that five times. Low ready. Disengage the safety. Pull the trigger. Reset the charging handle. Reset the trigger. Reset the safety. Come back down. Do that five times. Okay, now we're going to do high ready. So at high ready, we're going to hold the rifle up. I'm looking just over the muzzle at what it is I want to be looking at, what it is I want to see. In this case, my target. I mean, we got a light switch on the wall over here. So I'm looking just over the muzzle at my light switch. When you're ready, you're going to drive the gun forward, pull the gun back into that position we talked about earlier, align my optic, disengage my safety, pull my trigger. Reset. Come back to high ready. Simple enough. Do that five times. Okay, now we're going to do high carry or up. <laughs> Whatever you really want to call it. Basically, we're just going to point the rifle up. Right now, if you are in the basement, make sure there's no one above you, okay? This is good safety practice. We don't want to point our rifle at anything we're not willing to destroy. <clears throat> However, the really thing I like about pointing my rifle straight up is I can easily move around people. Like if I had to move around a friend or a buddy or a partner, I can easily do that with my having my rifle up. So it's a very good carry position to utilize and, and one to get used to, and one to get used to transitioning to being on target from, from having your rifle up. So, same thing. From here, we're going to flow right through that high ready position. See that? See how that works? And then we're going to put the rifle in our shoulder, get on target, disengage the safety, pull the trigger. Reset, come back up. Pretty simple. Do that five times. Flow through that high ready, shoulder the rifle, disengage the safety, pull the trigger. One of the things I want you to be working on while you do this is calling your shots. When you're pulling that trigger, I want you to make sure where was that red dot or where was that front sight the, the moment I pulled the trigger, because that's where my bullet is going. Remember your mechanical offset. However, I want you to call your shot. You need to learn to read your sights so that you know where your bullets are going rather than looking at your paper. It's going to make you a much better shooter. <clears throat> Five times from high carry or up. Now there are more complicated dry fire things you can do. By complicated, I really just mean we can work on clearing our functions, we can work on loading the rifle, we can work on doing tack reloads with the rifle. There's all kinds of fun things we can do with the rifle and dry fire. However, assuming you're new and assuming you just got this thing and you just want to know how to handle it and work it, start here and then we can always progress on to those other things later down the line. Do brave deeds and endure.